Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. So I mentioned in the last couple of weeks setting up this backup internet system in which basically I've set up my ISP router, connect that into a 4G, uh, TP-Link 4G cellular router and that cellular router is giving me backup connectivity so that when my ISP line goes down, as it does from time to time, the 4G uh, network is going to kick in and fail over and that allows me to connect basically I've set up my whole network, wireless devices, Wi-Fi devices onto that TP-Link device um, and automatically when cellular, when ISP goes down, we go on to cellular. So I had that all wired nicely via a couple of Ethernet switches, Wi-Fi and I thought my job was done and I could get back to not setting up internet. Unfortunately, uh, when I purchased that TP-Link cellular router, I didn't think to check exactly what kind of a Wi-Fi network it could create and broadcast. Uh, the reason is I don't use Wi-Fi. I've been using Ethernet for many years, but my wife does use Wi-Fi and she works from home. So she was telling me that the Wi-Fi not only was bad, it was like worse than when we had our ISP router. So I looked into it and then I figured out that, okay, well this TP-Link router only creates a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network and that's very liable to interference so that made sense because sometimes the wi-fi was strong sometimes it was weak so i was trying to think what can i do obviously if you've got a a, a piece of hardware that can create a 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi you can't make it create a 5 gigahertz because the antennas are in the in the hardware what it can do is what it can do so what i was looking at instead was different options. So I came across two approaches that I could use. One was using another router and putting a third router onto a uh, ethernet switch and just using that router for Wi-Fi. Now that router would have to support um, access point mode, sometimes called bridging mode. I think they're quite similar. Um, so I looked at a couple of those devices, but the best one seemed to be what are called access points. And TP-Link has range extenders that also has access point mode and routers that also have access point mode. Um, it seemed like getting another router was overkill. So what I did was we went down to my local tech store. Um, my choice of products was very limited because we're on the eve of a major public holiday where I'm based. So it was kind of like what they had in stock was what I could use, but I needed to sort this out today so that my wife could uh, get work done from home. So I've just set up the network and apparently everything is good. Uh, the Wi-Fi network is good. So let me just show you what I did. And it's using a device called the RE200. Uh, so here is the unbeautiful looking uh, networking that I've set up here. And um, let me just explain what you are looking at here. So I have my ISP router. It's going LAN to WAN into the TLMR100. That's the 4G router from TP-Link. Uh, so that's doing its failover and setting up the network. And what I did then is put an ethernet switch out of that uh, TP-Link router because there was, there's only one, there's only two networking ports. So if you're using one for, if you're using one for WAN, you've only got one port for LAN. So um, I put out a switch and then from the switch, I've wired in this uh, device, which is the RE200. It's primarily marketed as a range extender and that's its, that's its like normal use that you would basically uh, connect this to an existing Wi-Fi network and it would just, you know, uh, repeat um, and strengthen the network, but you can use it as an access point. It has a P mode and the good news is I got it set up. Now, when I researched this yesterday, I found on the TP-Link forums, some guy saying he couldn't get it set up. Um, but, and then an official TP-Link resource saying you could totally use this range extender in AP mode. And as I said, I have it set up uh, and it's working just fine. So that's my networking now. This is going into the ISPs, going into the TLM 100. We actually have three routers now in sequence. And from the ethernet switch, well, if you count the ethernet switch, we've got four daisy chain hardware devices. And from ethernet switch, uh, the, that, there's an ethernet connection from that switch going into the uh, RE200 and that is broadcasting out to Wi-Fi networks and it's getting me the five gigahertz network that I couldn't achieve with my TLMR100 because it doesn't have hardware for that. Um, so this is the just a kind of a schematic of the network that I've just described. Uh, I'm 
gonna just kind of glance over this because it's pretty much same the same info I've just described. ISP router goes into the TP link, TP link to an ethernet switch, um, from the ethernet switch out to the RE200, wired clients are coming off the ethernet switch, that's my desktop and my NAS, and then two wireless networks coming off that uh, TP link uh, extender slash access point, and from those two Wi-Fi networks, we're connecting all the wireless clients at home. Uh, here's what I had to do basically. So after plugging it into the wall, um, I hooked it up via, no, I connected to it firstly via ethernet from a laptop because um, I figured that if I did the connection to the ethernet switch that that would be potentially problematic and I wouldn't be able to get to the web interface. So to play it safe, I actually firstly connected to its default IP address using a laptop, ethernet cabling patched into the RE200 and uh, just connected to it directly and then changed the mode. That's in the, that's in the top right of the screen as you can see here, there's a little mode switch and change that out of its default mode which is as a repeater and change it into access point mode and as it says here, transforms your existing wired network to a wireless network, which is exactly what I wanted to do, except that the wired network was actually a extension of another wired network and there it was able to create a wireless network, but whatever, technical points. But that was the correct thing, the correct mode. Then the device rebooted. And then basically, so here's how it looks now from the, um, embedded web server page on the cellular router. So it picks up the uh, RE200 as a wired client because it's connected uh, via ethernet and really off that router even though it's connecting via a switch. And what I did then was uh, firstly, so after I got this running, and how did I, how, to get this running I basically went into the embedded web, web server on the RE200 and I just followed the usual steps to set up an, a wireless network five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. And then I took down the network on the TP link because for interference purposes, you don't want to have, there's no point having, you know, the wireless network coming off this and the, um, and the TP link running in AP mode. So I took that one down. So now my wireless networks are just coming off the wireless extender slash access point. Um, I also then reserved an IP address I added the IP of the uh, access point as a reserved address. So to do that, go into advanced settings and under network, click go into LAN settings and uh, you can add, if you click on add there, it'll, it'll show what devices are available on your network by MAC address. And then I just added that local IP address as a reserved IP for the access point. I don't think there was a need to do that, but I figured that it would be worth it because just so that the access points uh, web admin address remains on a stable URL. And finally, I put up the network and now we're good. So um, just to say that basically this can be done. I don't wanna say don't believe everything you read on the, you read on the internet, but I created a thread yesterday on Reddit um, and I was like, what can I do? I have this cellular router and it's only giving me 2.4 gigahertz and I want to create a five gigahertz network. So what should I buy? Could I put on another router or could I put on an access point? And like half the people were like, a few people were like, yeah, just buy an access point or buy a router. And then a few people were like, you absolutely, it'll never, it won't work and setting up multiple routers. And so um, just, just be careful who you take advice from. I was pretty sure that this was going to work and at the end of the day, it worked absolutely perfectly. And now I've uh, gone ahead and connected all my wireless devices. We've two wireless printers on the network. I've um, basically attached all those to the access points Wi-Fi network, moved those over from the previous Wi-Fi network, which was on the, um, on the cellular. They're all working, I, I can print from my desktop, which is on ethernet, and I can print directly to the wireless printer, which is coming off the access point. I don't have Wi-Fi on my desktop at all. It's all working over the same local network just as it should, and uh, it's good. And the uh, five gigahertz network is apparently much better than the 2.4 gigahertz that we had from the cellular router. So the other 
stakeholder in this uh, network is uh, is happy. So all is good. So just wanted to do this video demonstrating how we got this set up. If you have bought yourself a router that um, is only broadcasting on 2.4 gigahertz, but it's passing, through, it's already passing through connectivity, and you're not sure, can you use something like a TP-Link range extender or access point to bring out um, another wireless network, and especially a five gigahertz network, just to say that um, I managed to do so using this setup, using two TP-Link routers on the back of an ISP router and networking everything together, and it's working uh, just fine. And the TP-Link software, I have to say, it's really easy to work with, really easy to change mode, really logical, the schematics are good. So I, I think TP-Link TP -Link has, has its critics for consumer networking uh, software, but I found all the devices I bought so far with it uh, easy to work with, with the exception of the load balancer, which uh, the cellular router wouldn't work in bridging mode. That's the only trouble I've had so far. Anyway, hope that video was uh, useful. If you'd like to get more videos from me about home networking, tech, Linux, all other manner of topics, please feel, please feel free to subscribe to this channel.